Can you hear me, Miss Ann? Um, yeah, do you mind muting your uh, your volume so we're not broadcasting just yet? Top audio for uh, OB. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host Anne, and disembodied voice Justin, who's going to be very distracted today as he has got a lot of phone calls to take this morning. So, if we don't hear a disembodied voice, that's why, because he's super busy. And if you don't hear him, even if I have a cure emergency, which is extremely likely today, that's why. But other than that, how are your Tuesdays, or Monday number two, for some of you? Hello everybody, I see you all. Ugh. Allergy strike. It was very cold here this morning. By very cold, I mean 48 degrees, you know, because I'm very sensitive to cold. So when it goes below 50, I'm like, oh, and I just shrivel up into a little Ann kernel of unhappiness. So that's that's me in cold weather. That's why I moved to Texas, because, yeah, I can handle 102. Yeah, cold in Austin, too. Yeah. Yeah, take it. If I didn't have to take the dog out, I wouldn't care, right? But I have to take the dog out for her walk. So, hello, John David Speaks. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Super tired? Yeah. Today our water's getting shut off because they're... Uh, the good news is they're upgrading our water heater system. The bad news is we don't have water for a day. So, I managed to get my shower in just in time before they shut it off. Freezing rain on top of snow. Fun, fun. Hi, Damsels. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 39 in AZ. Yeah, the weather out here reminds me kind of of Arizona weathers are black because I've got my parents snowbirds. So they they uh, they have a house in Chandler and they've got a house up in Wisconsin. Um, they're going to drive down usually right after Halloween. So, yeah, I, I visit them in the winter and it's always so cold in the morning and then it turns nice. 
it kind of reminds me of that weather out here in the South Bay. Finally below 70 in SoCal. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, well, NorCal also. Hi. <laughs> Although we're supposed to be, like, mid-70 temperatures, I think, this week. Like, as far as, like, at, at like, 4 p.m., it'll hit, you know, 70. It's, uh, it's like 46 degrees outside. Yeah, outside. well, there you go. You had my morning then. Yeah, because it was, like, 46 here. Um, but yeah, cold, cold. That's very cold for Texas this time of year. But then it again, is. It really is. Yeah. Ugh. Yuck, Kiri. Well, we won't get, we won't get like super cold here. I think in the Bay area, I don't know. I, I guess it hits the thirties sometimes it hits the thirties at night, probably in the winter. Right, Kiri. So yeah, so we may have a Kiri emergency today, guys. Cause she, she was not thrilled this morning and did not do all her beesness. So just be aware. I have a Kiri emergency flag right here. Ready, ready and prepared. So, all right, we're going to Gemstone Dragon. Hey, Nomad Zeke, thank you. Thank you, Valandar, too. Yay for the resubs coming through. You still have some snow. Yeah, uh, I don't miss it. 84, wow, missed him. All right, let's go. Let's go Draconic. Oh, get my sticker out of the way. All right, so guys, I have, I have something to ask Twitch chat because, you know, all streamers have random questions for Twitch chat and Twitch chat gets to decide. So do you guys, you, you guys know the Reaper Ghoulie Bags, so you probably know these candies, right? Because I didn't know about these until the Reaper Ghoulie Bags started and Adrienne started buying them. There's the Tootsie Roll, like, fruit chew things. And I love, I'm addicted to this vanilla one. I mean, Ed and I are both addicted to this. So much addicted that I bought myself a bag here because I was so missing the Reaper Ghoulie bags because I don't work down in Texas anymore. But David swore to me when he saw this, he's like, every little kid in the neighborhood would hate you if you gave those out for Halloween. I do not agree. Like, I am the kind of person who gives out mini candy bars at Halloween because I like to bribe my neighborhood children. But still, I don't think kids would hate oh, you. Oh, you're a hero, Ann. That's amazing. <laughs> Those were so few and far in between when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too, exactly. So, yeah. See, yeah, vanilla is the best one. See, why don't they just make a bag of vanilla? I would just buy it. Don't think you've ever had them, Shadow Raven? Yeah. They preferred chocolate. Yeah. Well, well, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the fruit chews are solid. I, I even like Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie Rolls, I'm afraid, and Grunig, I do still like. They're just, I also have a small bag of tiny Tootsie Rolls. But, but these things, these things are awesome. I used to go and grab them, you know, grab one out of the tub upstairs when they were building ghoulie bags. If I felt very stressed, which, you know, usually around the holidays at Reaper, you do. Um, so that's the, the built-in company stress relief, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, chocolate all the way. No question but that mini candy bars trump these any day. But David's claim that the neighborhood children would hate me if I gave these out, I think, is an exaggeration. I do not think the children would hate me for these. Yeah, the flavored ones are better. Like, they need to really up their Tootsie Roll game. Like, I, I still love Tootsie Rolls, but if they made them chocolatier, I would not complain, right? If Tootsie Rolls turned kind of brownie flavored, like even more fudgy, I, I would be okay with that. <laughs> You're not so sure he's wrong, huh? Use this touch. Yeah. I mean, these are terrible for you. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's all just corn syrup, right? And artificially flavored at that. And yet, and yet, there are worse candies. Like, okay, like Smarties are worse candies. All right. There are lots. Hard candy is worse candies, right? There are lots of crappy candy out there that kids would hate me a lot more for than this, in my opinion. Can buy bags of only vanilla from the Tootsie Roll site. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so in danger now. <laughs> right, these aren't the most right sentimental. Right, they're not the most disappointing. Like you're sad you didn't get a Reese's peanut butter cup, but at the same time, these are not terrible. You could eat them. Team Vanilla. Yeah, all right. Lots of you are Team Vanilla. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a pretty evil, uh, evil TikTok. Yes. But you know what? That was just like, yeah, smart. See, Canadian candy is better. I've had this experience that Canadian candy is better because I used to date a Canadian. So, uh, no. Oh, those are weird. I mean, I used to love them as a kid, Ify, but now I'm like, how the hell did I like those? Yeah, lemon drops are okay. You're right. Sour balls, I'm not, I'm not a sour, I'm not a sour person, so I'm not. Oh, well, I'm, I'm in then. A <laughs> pound of vanilla Tootsie Rolls is about to come my way, D. Clearman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Canadians just have better candy. I mean, in general. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's mix up our... While we're talking about Halloween candy, because I figure this would be topical, right? Because, you know, it is Halloween. It is kind of suitable this year that Halloween is indeed the lead-up to our election. <laughs> Although, you know what, guys? National Geographic did an article yesterday that I got... I get their email blurb, their email uh, thing... And they said that we might hit a record voter turnout that we haven't seen since 1908, which would be, um, oh, maple. I can't even get maple. Like, I love maple candy, and I can't even get it. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, so the, they were talking about how we might hit a record voter turnout, uh, which would be over 65% of the electorate, like 65% of registered voters coming out to vote this year. And we are, we are closing in on that because of all the early voting and, uh, you know, and mail-in ballots and all of that. But apparently a lot of people really care about the election this year, as they should, as they, as they really should every year, right? But I guess there's less, um, there's less of a difference between the candidates, right? So it's really when you have a very different election, when you've got two very different candidates is when you see this. You, yeah, we already have record early. Yeah, almost all states do, I think, in our... Oh, you could ship me maple candy? God, Shadow Raven is going for all those gold stars. He's like, if I give Anne a box of maple candy, will she give me more gold stars? That's the question. Yeah, I never looked till it was over because I wanted it to be a surprise. I'm with you, Valandar and Iffy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's what we're seeing. A lot of states. Uh, I think Wisconsin already had, and it was crazy too. It was like I forget which state it was. Maybe Michigan, where in 2016 they had 7,500 like early voting ballots, and this year they've got 145,000. Like it's insane. <laughs> Wait, I take bribes. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, oh, you're going to answer. Yeah, I already. California does mail in as a matter of course. They do it every year. They just do it because it's easier. When you've got such a big population, I guess. Um, so I voted uh, last week, and I have my voted. I have my I voted sticker set aside so that I can wear it on the third. All right, let's see. I'm gonna do greens today. I want to get some of this ancient oak. I want to get some of these green bits kind of blocked in, so I can see what the color really looks like after I shade it. Oh, an international candy exchange one time. That's cool. Yeah, I don't remember that, but then I was I, I was not on the forums after my first few years. First few years I was on the forums a lot because part of my job was to talk in the painting forum and answer questions. Yeah, parents have to check, yeah. Well, as long as ours was individually wrapped, my parents didn't. Like, as long as there was obviously no tampering, they were fine about it. But we grew up in a pretty small town. But yeah, for the record, I love maple candy. Right, yeah. Well, you know, I think it, 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 like, I've been very good about it. I wasn't good about it when I was really young. But, um, but I mean, you register and you stay registered. And you really don't have to do a lot of work to, to stay registered in most states. So, I mean, if you don't really care or you're really just kind of split between the candidates, I can see if you don't want to vote. But in general, I agree with you. I think that what, what makes me the most happy was that in the article they said that, uh, there was one state, was it Florida? There was there was at least one where, like, the young voter turnout. Oh, no, it was University of Florida that did the survey, but I think it was countrywide. Um, on, like, people under 30 are considered the young voters, and young voter participation was up by 30%. So that was that's great. That's really, really good. I love it when young people get out to vote because I really feel like their voice is underrepresented in the country, and uh, I like to see them stepping up and, you know, making a statement. Even if your vote is one in a giant bucket of votes, at least you actually went out there and said, hey, no, this is what I believe. I hate it when I hear, like, my young friends or coworkers go, oh, no, I don't really feel like voting. No, I don't really care. It's like, no, you should care. <laughs> you should care. Or, or worse, what they usually say is, oh, my vote doesn't matter. Hey, I'm in California now, and that means my vote doesn't matter because I'm voting with the majority of the electorate, and also we're the last state counted. But I still went out, I still got my butt out and voted. I still got my ballot. I went out and got registered and did my thing. So come on, people. Come on, everybody. Everybody vote. Even if it means my candidate doesn't win. If most of the co country votes, then I'm like, well, I guess that's just the way it is. That makes me sad, but you know. 
I think I'm going to mix some of my cat's eye green into my um, ancient oak just a tad to lighten it up. Now, ancient oak's a funky color, and when you mix something like naga green into it, you can make it shift pretty vibrant. But cat's eye's got a lot of ochre in it, so it's going to be more muted, and it's not going to have quite that same effect. And then we've got our leaf bud green, which was our base color. Yeah, that was always kind of my, uh, yeah, no problem, Slyria. I believe in it. I voted in the last many, many elections. I am a registered Democrat, but I respect Republicans because, you know, a lot of my family vote Republican because they're, it's Wisconsin and my, my mom is from a farming family. And so a lot of them are more conservative. It's like to each your own, you know, vote what you believe, vote your heart. Do some research to make sure you're voting your heart. I do strongly believe in that. Like, I think I mentioned when David and I... California has a lot of propositions where you where everybody gets to vote on them, where they're not just, you know, put up before the state legislature and voted on, but the people actually vote on them. So this was more voting than I've ever had to do on a ballot ever. And I actually did sit and read through the propositions to, to see, you know, whether I really supported them or not. Yeah, I voted independent um, back... Uh, Back a ways, a ways back. I don't even remember the election. Um, but I do not like, I do like feeling, if, if I'm going to vote, I, I usually find that the Democrats tend to be um, where I'm at because I tend to vote very pro-environment, but I don't like some of the stuff that Green Party wants to do. So I tend not to, uh, I tend to, tend to vote with, with the, with the Dems on that. I also tend to go for women's rights and that also tends to be a, uh, an issue that the Dems are about, you know, about with me on it. So, but yeah, I mean, it is really, what I really want to see is the country respecting each other, right? Um, mostly I was wondering how these wings are going to turn out. So what we're going to do here, guys, is somewhat blending. And you see how much that ancient oak immediately hits that, because leaf bud is such a, uh, such a, um, such a mild color. So I'm going to use some of my cat's eye here to blend this into. And I'm using a round brush for this because when you're wet blending, you really want to make sure uh, that your brush stroke, you know, you know, your brush strokes probably going to show here and there. And if I used a flat for this, I would get a lot of like kind of edge strokes would show up. And I don't want that. I, I want a softer, see if I can feather this in a little softer than that. So that's why I'm working with a round even though I might get smaller brush strokes and, and I can't cover the territory as fast, um, I feel like I'll get a more organic blend. Hold on. It's all peoples or black, right? Politics is all just people. And so really what I want to see is everybody respect each other. What, what bothers me is when people really get insulting with each other and don't respect each other for their views. Everybody's got a view for a reason. Like my dad and me have very, very dissimilar politics, but I still try to respect his viewpoint. So I'm throwing in some Osarian sand here. It's hard to wet blend a very large area like this. So when you do it, Use a large brush and also lay your paint down a bit thicker so you have more time to work. And also try to work on like one main area. So here I'm working on this area right here that my brush is kind of going around, right? <laughs> Dragon Eye, that's awesome. I can't vote, I'm 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, okay, feathering, yeah. Iffy, good question. It's not a dumb question. It's never a dumb question. Um, yeah, I think the Electoral College, I'm kind of against it. But anyway, so feathering. Feathering is another name for layering. And it is named after, and it is the type of layering I do. So, you know, the quills on a feather, how they come off of a center line, you know, and kind of just all go the same direction. This is feathering. And it's also used to uh, to talk about wet blending if you're feathering a wet edge in. So let's let's do that. Let's actually make a wet edge and feather it in. So let's get some of our paint here. We've got to lay it down fairly thickly. 
So if we lay down this nice thick layer of leaf bud green and then say we want to feather it in feather it into a shadow color. So you've got your wet here feathering again you feathering a wet edge you're blending in with this brush stroke see how that blends if you're going against the shape that you've got you have to work fast if you've got a lot of it that that is feathering so you can do it wet or dry like you can do it wet wet into wet or you can do it um, wet over dry But usually, when people are talking about feathering the edge, this is what they're doing. They're talking about going, if you've got a long shape, you're going against the edge, you're making a feather stroke, and that creates a blend. And this is how I, this is the stroke I always use for layering, because I find that it gives the highest uh, success ratio. Now, when you've got a hard edge like this, you can also feather this in. Like, if I take some leaf bud... Let's see if you can see it. See that hard edge right there? See how we got a really hard, hard line? If you don't want that, it's still a little bit damp, so I can still blend it a little bit. So I can feather right across that. So yeah, everybody's going to use it differently. I tend to use the term layering because that is more of a universal term I find for um, wet over dry. But there are a lot of people, especially in Europe, you're going to find terminology varies from Europe to the States. So it never hurts. It's never a dumb question to ask because everybody tends to use slightly different terminology. So, yeah. So, like that. Um, Sarge, you want a long, narrow brush for it. Because you're trying, if you use something thick, then you're not going to get the as nice of a, a, a small of a line. So it's not going to blend quite as nicely. It's going to be more globby. Um, so I always use my my standard brushes. The brushes that I tend to use, the long, narrow brushes, are great for layering and feathering. And I use them because they are great. Because that's what I do. That's the like feathering is the entirety of how I paint. So I just don't call it feathering because I think that people have a lot of misunderstandings around that term. And I prefer to call it layering, laying down layers of paint over a dry substrate. Oh, no, Madzy. You're getting a negative gold star now. <laughs> All right, Iggy. Um, so this is, somebody asked about feathering, Iggy, so that was what I was talking about. Um, feathering is also called layering. Now, look here, I got a little bit of, uh, I lost a little bit of my shadow here. And my ancient oak is still a bit thick. But yeah, feathering is just like, they call it feathering because you're drawing quills like on a feather. I've got a little bit, a little bit too harsh here. My ancient oak needs to be thinned down a bit or I need a 50-50 blend. So when you're dealing with colors that are so different, do you see how much darker this is and how much of an impact it has on these lighter greens? Because they're not, their pigments that are in these lighter greens are not as high coverage. They're not as high impact. They're going to kind of shrink away because they're very delicate they're not going to be as harsh as this ancient oak. So I have two choices. I can either build a half and half mix of this ancient oak to work with first and then go down to all the ancient oak, or I can thin down my ancient oak to get more subtle effects. Yeah, that's the problem there, Valander. I've heard that. The big problem, for those who haven't heard, is that because mail-in voting is going to take a long time to get counted, there's going to be a lot of angst probably over this election, and we're not going to know the results on election day. Just get that in your head right now. Unless somebody wins by an absolute landslide, unless there's an absolute landslide. But even then, when like 60 or 70 percent of the votes in a state won't even be counted on the third... Because it's just so huge, especially with the turnout. The high turnout actually makes this worse. So one hopes that we don't get a swing in later states because of an apparent swing the other way in early states. I don't know. I just, uh, I want people to vote their heart and be done with it. That's all. 
I don't want people voting for, hey, Ministry Stand, yay, woohoo! Yeah, we're talking politics and feathering, layering, and uh, Halloween candy. That's what our topics are today, Ministry Stand. <laughs> but the American election is, of course, coming up on us very quickly, so we are uh, talking about voting difficulties and stuff, although I already voted by mail. All right, so let's try to lighten up this area on the outside. But yeah, you can see once you get that dark color in there, it's really hard to um, blend out from it. Like, it, it sticks. Um, yeah, Halloween copy, ca Halloween candy was our first topic because my, uh, my boyfriend David insisted that if I gave away fruit-flavored Tootsie Rolls that all the kids in the neighborhood would, would hate us. And uh, I, I insisted this was not so because I eat fruit-flavored Tootsie Rolls by choice, darn it. All right, so yes, wet blending. So a lot of things I do on the wing, a lot of the thing I'm going to do on the wing is wet blending because it's just easier. It's such a big, broad area. It lets you set up stuff fast. Wings are boring, let's face it, unless you're doing patterns. And I haven't decided that, I, I really didn't decide to do patterns on this one. Um, I tend to, like, it would be hard for me to figure out what pattern I even wanted to do on this wing because it's a gemstone dragon, right? So it's like, well, do I do like a crystal pattern? That wouldn't really look good on these smooth areas. You know, so I didn't really want to do a pattern on this dragon. So here we are blocking in. Very, very much brush strokes you can see. Ah, oh no. I reached for the wrong paint. Okay, so when this happens, guys, then rinse out your brush. Bring it back. Slurp it up. And you may still be able to wet blend your edge if you're fast. And if you don't, if it's dried already and you can't, just let it dry and then go over it again. Don't try to, like, screw up your paint job. Get bad lines like I got there. Got a bad line. Nobody likes bad lines. They have no friends. I have a bad line there because I, uh, I had that edge dry before I came back to it. Let's see... We'll see, Twistedoma. That's why I'm hoping uh, that I'm hoping that does not happen. But I I know that uh, perhaps my hopes are doomed to failure. But we shall see. We shall see. I I would hope. I really would hope that the states are doing everything in their power to make it very clear and transparent in their elections. No matter no matter who that state you know vote in the end tends to go for. I just, we all have so much angst this year as it is that we really don't need more angst over the election. All right, so I managed to smooth that out. Haha. <laughs> You bought bourbon for the election week. David's got plenty in the cupboard, and I can't have much booze, so I'm just kind of doomed. Um, candy is going to have to be my thing. Oh, Reese's Pieces Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds really good. All right. Well, actually, I didn't want to get distracted by the wings, but anyway. So, starting out, very subtle shadows on the wings. Remember, these are going to be raised, so... Let's see. Let's just go back. Let's thin our ancient oak because, as we have determined, it is very, very harsh right now. And in very dark compared to my other delicate greens. <laughs> I took taking the fourth as a vacation day. I wonder how many people did that. Like, I kind of wonder. I think I will do a 50-50 mix. Normally I don't do this, but... I will mix uh, a half and half of my cat's eye in ancient oak to start the shading on these little tiny scales. I don't want them to go too dark off the bat. So let's just kind of outline them a little bit. Put in some shadows where they belong underneath places. Underneath gems, you'd have shadows. There is some light transmitting through the gem, but the light would be colored. So if you do highlight underneath there, let me get closer. Boop. And in focus. 
Oh, there we go. So if I lift it up, I can get in focus. Got it. All right, so blocking in this 50-50 uh, mixture of ancient oak and cat's eye green. It's a softer green. Yeah, leftover sauce. That's the problem with peanut butter sauces. It's just like... It's uh, it's evil, and you eat a lot of it because it's so tasty. I, I, I do try to kind of not make things that uh, are terribly bad for me <laughs> these days. Although, or I try to make a version of it that's slightly better for me. Let's see. I'm going to blend that in a little bit. So we've got some demarcations coming out here. We've got some shading. Can go a little darker probably with uh, the lines down under here. The shadows between these scales can go all the way down to real ancient oak. And this whole thing under the leg has got to be darker. Now, if if I was working with greens or colors that were higher coverage, guys, I could just you know drop a real heavy shadow here. Um, but my greens are so delicate and it's going to take me so long to get them back up to, you know, cause they are not high coverage greens. These are very, very, very soft and beautiful greens, but they are not really high coverage. So I don't want to go too crazy on the shading in here. I want to kind of work down to it cause I don't want to make a mistake and then I have to waste time underpainting to get my greens back up to where they belong. So I'm shading that entire bottom of the leg there. And I'm kind of going to tilt my dragon and see where the light falls here. So you see there's a shadow down the inside of the leg there. So I'm going to take my uh, mixture of cat's eye and ancient oak and put that shadow in, paint it in. And also hit these wrinkles in the leg. So yeah, I would say that making that 50-50 mix of cat's eye and ancient oak was a good judgment call. Yeah, peanut butter is not allowed in my house, but that's because um, my gut has a sensitivity to it a little bit. Peanuts are not good for me. That was another thing that started with my general gut issues. I don't really miss it. When something makes you feel not great, you tend not to miss it when you have to put it out of your diet, at least with me. I guess some people don't have that. They still want all the stuff they can't have, but I never got that. Like, once it makes me feel sick, I lose interest in it. I'm just like, nope. No thank you. Get that paw. Putting. I'm going to take my darker shadow, my pure ancient oak, to get the lines between this paw, these uh, toes, though. Here we can afford to go dark. And at the bottom of the paw. This paw is pretty perpendicular, so harsher shadows are okay. Yeah, I eat lots of other nuts, just peanuts I kind of avoid. I have a friend who has a terrible reaction to them. Like, uh, she has, gets arthritis, her fingers swell up like little balloons if she has peanuts. Let's see here. Okay, so getting that paw. I just learned to make a pizza that didn't make me miserable, Nilak. Tomatoes react. Uh, tomatoes are my major uh, trigger for my um, whatever gut problem I have, be it Crohn's or whatever. They tentatively said Crohn's disease. But um, so even a little tomato these days is uh, bad for me. And so I just learned to make pizza uh, low carb with low carb crust and uh, pesto instead of tomato sauce. And I am A-OK -okay with that. That's tasty. Of course, pesto is definitely not your low-calorie game, so, you know, I don't do it every day. But if I really want pizza, I can make a pizza I like. And that's mostly what I did with all my diet changes. I'm just like, all right, well, I can't have X anymore, and I really like X. So how do I learn to make a version of X that doesn't make me feel sick? Pause. Pesto's awesome. I don't like the, um, I actually don't like white sauce. 
it's just it's all so often so bland for me and it and when you get it like when you really cheese it up then it's really high calorie and so i'm just like you know at that point i may as well be eating pesto that i like better so some nice wrinkles and details on the paw hey declo how's it going thanks for the raid our uh, disembodied voice justin would normally thank you but uh but he is he is busy today so we are uh when the cat's away the mice will play um and i'm ann welcome i work for reaper obviously since you're on reaper miniatures twitch and uh, i also do my own streams on my own channel at painting big but here this morning we're working on the gemstone dragon from bones five and i am working on shading and highlighting the green and seeing how my colors are working out here i'm using some pretty delicate um kind of like forest like pale kind of pastel forest is what, what i wanted kind of an autumnal forest dragon um well I, if i eat tomatoes i die miss him so I, it's kind of a good deterrent like i i'm not somebody to sit and uh we're also talking about halloween candy and dietary restrictions <laughs> just because why not it's twitch right um but yeah i've i've just uh i am not somebody to miss something once i am told it will kill me like, at that point, I get kind of resentful and just say, well, screw you, tomatoes. I didn't like you anyway, and I just don't miss them. Um, <laughs> it's just an attitude. It's like all the mindset. You you think that you wouldn't, you couldn't live without it until you realize that you won't live with it. And so you just, uh, yeah, you just get over it. <laughs> uh, how much do I water down my paints? A lot, Ash. Um, I would say these guys are probably about two to one. I want to say. Uh, and for layering, usually, it's more like a one-to-one -one paint to water, which is really thin. Uh, but since these are so very... These are more transparent paints to begin with, so a two-to-one paint to water. So there's about four drops of paint and two drops of water in these guys. Um, and I think even in the white, or in the uh, Osirian sand, sorry. This has more water because it's a stronger paint, and I wanted to thin it down more. I think it's got a, it's closer to one-to-one -one right now. And uh, my green over here kind of reflects that. You can see how it's transparent it is falling off the side of the palette here. Um, let's see. Good for you, Hyper Bunny. <laughs> you know, I didn't used to hate tomatoes. They were never my favorite, but uh, I, I missed salsa for a while. But then I realized um, that peach salsa is actually pretty cool. There are substitutes. I, do, I don't miss... Uh, I love guacamole more than I liked salsa ever. So if I want a chips and thing, I just go guac. All right. So we've wrinkled up the paws. I'm going to go up. This is a, this dragon, because he's a gemstone dragon, he's got a lot of texture in his skin. Where, like, any moment a gemstone could pop out. So we will go up and uh, hit these areas under the leg. Uh, Ash, when you thin your paint this much, a wet palette is not good for you. Um, I talk about this a lot, but I don't mind going over it again because it's, uh, it's kind of an important distinction. So the thing about a wet palette, the strength of a wet palette is that, you know, water wicks up into your paint and keeps it wet, right? But that works in reverse too. When you try to build a paint that's a certain consistency so that say you can blend with it, the problem with the wet palette is that it's either going to wick paint, wick water down out of your paint and make it thicker. And that happens a lot. Or it's going to wick even more water up into your paint and make it thinner than you need. So when you want to do precise mixes, like when you're trying to do blending and layering and you want your paint at a certain consistency and you want it to stay that way, wet palette works against you and will make it harder for you to do that. What I usually recommend is that you get both, um, when you're, especially when you're a beginner. Get both types of palettes. Use the well palette to figure out like what paint consistency is because when you first start out you really don't know much about thinning your paint and you don't know how much you need to thin your paint to get like blending or glazing or all that stuff being able to build a paint that's stable that stays the right consistency helps you learn that and internalize it in your gut once you know what a layering consistency paint should look like switch back to the wet palette you'll be able to build it you have to build every brush stroke but you'll be able to build it you know, um, same with glazes. You'll be able to, like, make a spot glaze on your wet palette. But if you go in as a beginner, I see people struggle with when they do want to get smooth blending, say on skin tones, um, then they, they struggle with it because the paint doesn't stay the same on a wet palette. That's that's the point. Um, so if you want to do a very, uh, like, a very painterly style where you have a lot of brush strokes and texture, wet palette is very good for you. 
Um, or if you're working with thicker paint like Sergio does, uh, Sergio Calvo Rubio, who's a very famous and very good painter um, from Spain. Sergio uses a wet palette all the time and he uses thick paint. But what you're going to see is when you're dealing with people like me who use very thinned paint all the time, we tend to like to at least most of the time we use the well palette. Um, it just drives me nuts on it. I can use a wet palette and I can get good results with it. But if I'm going to do competition painting, I'm on the well palette all the time, hands down. No question. Because I want to control my paint consistency. I want it to stay that consistency for 45 minutes to an hour while I blend something. And I, that on a wet palette, it just ain't happening. It just ain't happening at all. So that's why. Hey there, Rax. I see you. And Otter Mama and everybody else. Yeah, see, gemstones come from gemstone dragons. I bet you didn't know that. Hey, I need brown liner uh, because I need to line around these little gems. And I also need to make them orange because we're working on this leg. So we may as well work on the whole leg at once. Once again, I'm mixing up a ton of colors on my palette. But yeah, so that's why. That's why I don't use a, a wet palette. I have used a wet palette on the show before. Um, what I do find wet palettes very useful for is painting fast for me. If I want to do a lot of wet blending, uh, a lot, a lot of wet blending, then I find that the wet palette has good mileage for me. But that's because I'm working usually with th thicker or paint on a wet blend. All right, we've got our orange, got our yellow. I need my brown liner, brown liner. Woohoo. <sighs> it is a cold Tuesday. I was very cold taking Kiri out this morning. So yeah, so the thing is, guys, that different palettes, okay, different tools have different qualities, right? And that applies to palettes just as much as it applies to anything else in mini painting. So try both, see which one suits your style, work with it, get really familiar with it, then try the other one and see where it might, you know, succeed where your palette isn't as good or where it fails. So you don't want to use it for certain techniques, right? It's all learning your tools. But when you are starting, if you are trying to master paint consistency, I think you can master it much faster with a well palette because you can put down a certain number of drops of paint, a certain number of drops of water, and it will stay that way. It will not instantly begin to change. So you can learn a little bit easier. And I know that I'm a weird animal in mini painting today because most mini painters seem to like uh, wet palettes. I've always used a well and I didn't, uh, I made myself work with the wet, the wet palette to see what it was good at because you know, it's wise to know the tool because you might want to use it. And I came to the conclusion that it just doesn't suit my style because of the paint consistency that I gravitate towards. Yeah, I know I need to dig out my long sleeve shirts and change my closet over. Weirdly, I don't know, I, I still have my heat tolerance because when it was like in the 90s here, I was still going for walks um, this summer. But, uh, and I certainly have not gained a cold tolerance from California. If I didn't gain a cold tolerance from living in Wisconsin, I'm never going to have a cold tolerance. So I'm just going to pretty much freeze into a little and sickle when it goes under 50 degrees. Although I do keep the window open in the office here because, uh, one, it keeps the little doglet happy and comfortable because she likes a little bit cooler temperatures. It means it keeps this uh, room from getting stuffy when we've got all these lights on and stuff. All right, and I'm going to pop this, this gem too. The problem with this being the 3D print is that I can't, you know, it came all together. So I have to paint awkwardly uh, placed areas. Three inches of rain. Fun, fun. But Texas is a drier Florida. Florida. Kind of missed him. I mean, we have humidity for sure. Houston has is very um, Floridian in its humidity level. I hear. I've only been down once. Uh, now we get into the, can you paint this? Yes, I think I can just reach this the back of this gemstone. And I need to get the back of this uh, front leg too. So I can just barely reach it through this gap. See? 
So it's good that this dragon has long legs because it means that I can actually reach some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, tomatoes will be my last concern if I freeze. Yes, exactly. Well, at least it doesn't get like really bitter cold here. I mean, once I moved to Jaw Max, uh, Jaw Max Zoo, once I moved away from Wisconsin, I made, I took care always to move to warmer states. So I, I was out in Maryland on the East Coast. I liked it out there. Like there was snow, but in general, the winter was pretty temperate. Um, and uh, that was cool. But then I moved back to Wisconsin briefly. And then I got offered the job at Reaper and moved to Texas. So that was the warmest state that I yet lived in. And I really liked the warm weather, so that worked for me. Okay, so I can't really see the back of this. I can kind of see the back of this Lego from this side, so I'm going to try to blend in essentially a bit of um, my ancient oak here on the back side of this leg. Ah, I've gotten some of my orange there. I did. So trying to... Get a shadow blocked in, kind of on the back side of this leg. And I've got a kind of a place I missed there. Or that could be gemstone. Yeah, I think that's gemstone and I missed it, so I'm going to wash that out. Whenever I make a mistake, you'll notice I'm very easy, uh, very fast to reach for the water to wash off the area I painted incorrectly. And you just get into a habit. There we go. So there. So shading is going to bring out all those little wrinkles on his skin, which is nice. If the sculptor is going to put the work in to put texture on the mini, you may as well paint it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're French. Cool. Bonjour. I took, I, 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 uh, je parle un peu de français from years and years ago. I took it in school and I've lost most of it. Although I would like to go to France. Um, and if I did, if we do, I keep telling David we need to go because we both love French cooking <laughs> and art. And so, uh, if we do go, I'll brush up on my French and try to relearn a bunch of it. Took it in high school and college. Yeah, weather is nice in Maryland. I enjoyed my time there. I liked the East Coast a lot. Um, now I'm trying out the West Coast. <laughs> so I've lived on the East Coast, and now I'm living on the West Coast. And I grew up in the North at Midwest, and now I lived in the South Midwest. So I have done the four corners, guys. I've done the four corners. There's something to like about every state, although I am allergic to most of Wisconsin, <laughs> the state I grew up in. Like my allergies are terrible when I go home to visit. So a bit of a shadow behind that front paw. And a bit more of a shadow back here. Just trying to get all this stuff blocked in that's on the underside. Maybe bring it in a bit more dark now that I know where I'm at. Now the more the more dark we make the shadow, notice the darker the front limb looks. Like if you look at the green up here, it looks very bright. But now we're getting more of a realistic idea of how our green will actually look once we get it all blocked in. Now I haven't put highlights on. This is just base coat and shadow right now um, is what I've got on this front leg. So the next thing... Oh, you enjoy cooking. Very cool. I grew up watching Julia Child, who is, well, our, I mean, she was a Cordon Bleu chef, but she, uh, you know, she definitely Americanized French cooking. So. Her beef bourguignon is still pretty good, though, even if she is an Americanized French cook. But I am a Julia Child fan. Always have been. I didn't really learn to cook until much later in my life. Even though I liked cooking shows when I was a kid. 
There we go. Got a little dark shadow there. Yeah, the, I've had seasonal depression when I lived in Wisconsin, for sure, Dragon Eye. I even had it, I noticed it because when I went back to visit my parents from Texas to Wisconsin, it would, like, just close in on me. So that was a reason, that was a, one reason that I didn't want to live in the state anymore. I mean, I did grow up there. I spent, oh boy, I spent 30 years, no, less, 25 years, because I lived in other states when I was a young child. I was born in California. I was born in the exact town I now live in. I am only like four miles, maybe less than four miles. I may only be like three miles from the hospital I was born in. I'd have to look it up. When I go to Sprouts today, I will be within four blocks of my first home ever as a, as a human. Which just tickles me, like when I go to the store, because Tuesday is my store day. I just look over and I'm like, and over there is the apartment I lived in when I was a baby. Yeah, I mean, California has its downsides. Every state's got downsides, right? I have wanted to move back to California to try living here for many, many years. Um, because, of, you know, partially because I was born here. And partially just because it's a beautiful state. I do think that they do a lot right when it comes to, like, human rights and stuff. Um, and, you know, I so I, I wanted to try it. I wanted to try living out here. California also has a reputation as a weird state, and, well, I'm weird, so <laughs> I should fit right in. <laughs> Although Texas has its own brand of weirdness, and so does Wisconsin, to be fair. So I'm putting in some, uh, I mixed my leaf bud green with my uh, Orsarian sand. You guys remember I'm using this Pathfinder color, um, which is kind of a yellow sand, which I really like as an off-white highlighter for greens. I think it's very nice. Got a little bit too much white in it to go well with most browns, although if you're working with desert sand and uh, desert stone from Bones, it works really well. So the thing here is we want to highlight, but we don't want to lose a lot of our green. So we got to make sure we leave enough green. No, she was pretty good. Like she, Julia Child, uh, taught me to like roast a really good bird like she taught me how to roast ducks and chickens and geese like her books and stuff so americanized i mean she's like and she does tell people they can use like canned beans and stuff but she she herself i believe uses fresh used fresh she's she's long passed away this was an old show one of the first cooking shows it was the it, she was the person who um she was an american who lived in france and went to cordon bleu her husband was a diplomat and uh she learned to cook at the age of 45 and then she essentially brought the the french influence of cooking the french tradition of cooking back to america and made it accessible for like your average american housewife so although it wasn't like real french cooking in a lot of ways i suspect nonetheless she popularized the cuisine and got people to like look at french cuisine in america which really wasn't kind of a thing until then, like, like to look at, like, to learn, want to learn to cook French. I tend to like that sort of thing. I mean, even if it's not bringing, like, real bona fide French cuisine over, at least it raised Americans' consciousness of, oh, French, the French people know how to cook and their stuff is tasty. And it was also a cooking show that, that really engaged people and made them believe that they could cook better. Which is nice. So, yeah. All right. So I'm blending a bit here now. I want this paw to not lose its greenness, but I want those highlights. Yeah, she was from... Cal yeah, she was also in the... Yep, in the Secret Service. Yes, she was. Julia Child was really a fascinating person. Like, I have two... I have her autobiography, and then I have two biographies of her. Um, she had a fascinating life. But yeah, she was, she was from, uh, from California. And her father did not approve of her, uh, her army work or her, uh, her husband's, uh, work as a diplomat. We are okay, Saltor. We have discussed, uh, we've, we've run the gamut of discussion today. We started on Halloween candy, um, went into politics came out through cooking and are now discussing Julia Child. Um, you know, the usual, the usual. 
I still haven't eaten one of my sugary candies. I was kind of saving them for after lunch. Like, I bought them, and I'm going to have, like, maybe two a day because, you know, I'm on low carb. But it's Halloween, guys, and I'm still a kid at heart. All right, hands up. Who Who is an adult but still loves to eat candy around Halloween? Here. I'm here. Who else is, stand, is holding up their hand with me? Yeah, before she was a cook, Glass, yeah. She, um... She's a really interesting person. She was, rather, a really interesting person. Really had a unique life. Yeah, he or me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, Black, there are lots of reasons to be fat. I know I am a little bit pudgy myself. I regained a little bit of my weight. I lost a lot of weight when I went on the ketosis diet, um, like 60 pounds. But I gained a little bit of it out back here. I'm, I'm mostly at this point, I've, I've finally come to the conclusion, because I went back on keto to see if I could relose some of it. But mostly for me now, it's calorie counting. Uh, keto does a lot for you if you are very overweight, because it stabilizes your blood sugar, because you're not eating carbs, a lot of carbs. So it, it actually will help you to lose a lot of weight right off the bat. It also makes you not hungry. Like it, For me, it totally keeps me from wanting to snack, which is huge. Um, but then there comes a point where you've lost enough weight that for that last 20 pounds that you would like to lose, you really do have to count the calories or exercise a lot. Burn calories or count calories, one or the other. But yes, I do relent around the holidays here and there, um, just to make, for one thing, to make cooking easier for my relatives. Cause you know, you never want to look at them and say, hi, I'm gluten-free, low carb, no dairy. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to be that person, right? I never want to be that person. And my diet is a choice. That's not, except for the no tomatoes thing. That's not, that's not, uh, not real, um, negotiable. But, uh, in general, my diet is a choice because it's what I've had the success on for keeping my weight lower. So I, I can choose to go off of it to make it easier on my relatives and friends around the holidays. So we're darkening up our, our leg here. See, we bring in our shadow in again. Yeah, I only want candy around Halloween. Like, it's very seasonal. It is obviously a seasonal craving for me. It's it's the uh, Reaper goodie bag uh, crave craving. I totally blame it on Reaper. Reaper, do you hear me? I blame you. Um, but yeah, and it's specifically the Tootsie Rolls and those, those fruit Tootsie Rolls. Otherwise, I can take it or leave it. Like, I do have my, my dessert slash treat on low carb is really high quality chocolate. So uh, the Alter Eco Blackout, which is 85% cocoa, which many of you would probably not, not feel like is real chocolate because it's not sweet enough, but good enough for me. I like it a lot. They have a mint version. They have a mint blackout now. And it tastes like, like hardcore Thin Mints. <laughs> it's really awesome, actually. Um, it's my new favorite. But yeah, so usually if I'm going to have a dessert or something, it's that. Or I get the um, the ice cream made with uh, the alcohol sugars, erythritol, so it doesn't have as much of a glycemic impact. There. Now let's line around these little gemstones down here. We're getting, see, we're getting some nice texture on the leg. Oh, yeah, Old West Candy Store. Yeah, all that old traditional candy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Weight Watchers works for a lot of people. It didn't really work with me because I had such this... Uh, carbs, my blood sugar was really sensitive. So when I eat carbs, it makes me crave things a lot. I'm very bad at resisting that. So Weight Watchers didn't work for me very well, but keto did. Because it really kind of removes those cravings for me. My blood sugar stopped bouncing around all over the place. And I'm no longer at risk for diabetes and all that stuff. So it was, I guess it was health concerns that made me go low carb in the first place. But... I wasn't like in immediate like dire peril. I wasn't actually diabetic. It was just, I, I watched my godmother suffer through diabetes and she actually died of complications from it. So that kind of makes a big impact on you. You're like, yeah, maybe I don't ever want to get diabetes. I am, I guess I, I might be a weirdo. I don't know. They say that fear is not a good motivator for most human beings. Like it's not, it's not enough to motivate you to make life changes, but I find that it is an effective motivator for me. I really want to live till I'm 100. Like, I really, really do. So, any way that I can get healthier and... 
Um, oh, what is it? It's the new Atkins for a new you. Um, so that is, that's the book that I liked the best because it explains there are some things you have to do if you go on ketosis. Like you need to up your sodium intake a little bit because it's very much a diuretic diet. You also need to up your potassium. So I use the Atkins shakes for that because they have a good potassium load. Um, or you can eat a lot of avocado. Uh, but that book explains the science. A new Atkins for a new you explains the science behind it. Now from there, I do a very high vegetable keto. Um, and uh, I think it's important to involve a lot of vegetation in your keto diet if you want your biome, your gut biome to stay healthy. So, and that was just stuff I picked up from various books. So as I've, I, I'll tell you, once I raised the amount of vegetation, the amount of vegetables and salad I was eating on my keto diet, like everything started, I didn't even need like a lot of extra sodium or anything. Uh, my diet seemed to balance out very well. So. Okay, thanks Trixie Kitty. Yeah, anybody who knows a good... Uh, no, New Nordic, kind of like Mediterranean, but is it more fish and vegetables, Saltor? Because Mediterranean has its problems, too. Uh, although it has a lot of good research behind it that shows that it does actually, you know, it'll... If you're on, like, the crappy American diet, the Mediterranean diet is, is 50 times better. But, yeah, but I definitely found that keto, because it's a high fat, it's not all about the bacon. It is, uh, it's a, it's a high fat diet and a moderate protein diet for keto. Um, which is weird and counterintuitive. You will, you will look at the stuff that you can eat on the ketosis diet on the Atkins or whatever, and you will be like, this is a diet. Like this is real <laughs> here. Have more salt, have more bacon. But in reality, uh, it works best if you almost Mediterranean diet it. If you, uh, do a lot of healthy oils, like avocado oil and olive oil. Um, I, uh, I started going, I'm not a vegetarian, but I only eat meat for dinner now. And uh, I do a big salad for lunch. Or I do some uh, guacamole and plantain chips for lunch. Depending. I'm going to darken down this area now. But yeah, I mean, if you find that you have a lot of carb cravings and that you're very sensitive, your blood sugar is very sensitive, then keto may be a good call for you. You could look into it. It also is um, a very anti-inflammatory diet, which is why my Crohn's surgeon um, actually was happy that I had gone on it. She was the one who, who got me on gluten-free, and then uh, she thought that keto was an even better idea. She's really not eating much the inflammatory on ketosis diet. There we go. Now we're getting some real definition on the scales. You can see we got them coming up and down. We're getting a lot of nice texture here. We're um, we're, we're looking really weird because our, our gemstones aren't painted in yet. Yes, weight training. Absolutely. Now, given, given do remember that you will gain some muscle mass. But, yes, muscle burns fat. Active muscle burns fat. I just managed to start weight training again, Jabberwock. I was very happy because this apartment complex had has a gym. But of course, like, you know, during the start of COVID, I couldn't use it. Nobody could use it. Now it's open to appointment only, so one person at a time can use it. So I'm able to make, um, able to get time slots and do my weights, which is awesome because I haven't had a health club membership or anything or access for years. And I really missed it. I like weight training. There. All right, so I'm going to line around these crystals real gently. I don't want a huge dark line, but you can see, see kind of the dark line that I've got going on here on these guys. Just real subtle. If you do it really, if you, you can't get the line so fine, you can always touch it up. Getting a really fine line or drawing a really fine line with paint is dependent on your brush shape and dependent on your paint consistency and also dependent on unloading your brush adequately. If you dab your brush on a surface and it makes a puddle, then you are not in the right consistency. If you dab your brush on the surface and then you can draw a tiny line, you have the perfect paint consistency. And it doesn't matter what size, this is a very large brush.
Why do they always mow things outside of my window when I'm trying to, like, you know, talk to you guys? Silly people. I will go close the window if it gets much louder. Boop. So there, now we've got outlines around those gems. Hey, Varl! Awesome! 13 months in October. Perfect! Yeah, fiber is definitely, like, a thing, right, Saltor? I actually, I use some psyllium husk and stuff. Thing. Yeah, because it's California, right, Iffy? Here, let me go and close that window, guys. That way you guys don't have to listen to that for the last half hour. One second. I will leave you with an in-focus dragon. One second. Let me go and do that. Doo -doo -doo. Oh no, I'm trapped by my kneeling chair. And my window is all the way over here. That's only the problem with kneeling chairs, is extricating yourself. <laughs> Alright. Stupid. They might not be mowing, they might be, um... I think they're using a leaf blower to uh, clear out the rain gutters. Because we're gonna hit the rainy season. In December, I think. Yeah. Yeah, way less sugar. Yeah, 100... I mean, our diets have changed so much. In in retrospect, it's not surprising that our health issues have also changed for the worse. Alrighty, so let's see. Let's do some of these gems. Let's get some of these gems highlighted um, and get that one up on top kind of uh, figured out. Let's see. I gotta get back in focus here. That's a little better. There we go. Yeah, I found that in Texas that the wildlife was just, I could not even have an herb garden because the bugs were so militant uh, that everything would get eaten. Like, you, you could try to, like, you know, put whatever pesticide on it, but then, you know, you were putting pesticides on your food. And some of the natural ones just were not strong enough to deter some of the caterpillars or the whatevers. And so I had a lot more uh, luck out here with the herb garden outdoors on our deck. Although we don't get a lot of sun on our deck except in the evening. So our herblets definitely struggled a bit, but still had better luck than in Texas where I just gave up. Flat out gave up. So as I was talking about yesterday, when you're looking at where your highlights are going to be for these gems, you want to look top down if your light source is coming from the top. So if you look down here, you can see where I've got my brightest facets more or less outlined until we get over here. So right away, we know we need lighter facets on top up here, here. And up on the very tippy top up there. This guy. So you want to be able to kind of see consistency when you look down as far as where your brightest facets are. And that's the first step of gemstones is knowing Knowing what surface is going to be your lightest. This is going to get up here. Really just going to block in my highlights here. The other thing we need to do, which we did yesterday, was to outline all of our facets with pure white. So I'll mix some of that up in just a second. But you see, even with those that's starting, even just highlighting those high facets, you can get a feel for gemstone. And if you even like line your little facets with even a little bit of yellow, it still looks more, a little bit more like a gem. Oh yeah, crazy grasshoppers. Yeah, oof. Yeah, 
Texas gardening is a special challenge. Well, that's that's why I had a, I had a little arrow garden. I had my indoor hydroponic herb garden, and that was that was the best that was the best thing I could do. Alrighty, let's get out some pure white and uh, start edging our little crystal buddies and getting them more uh, facety. That's not a word, but Dr. Seuss says I can make up words, and so I'm going to say that I can make up that word. Oh yeah, I love Bambi. Bambi is tasty. I'm from Wisconsin, you can tell. <laughs> but yeah, right, deer overpopulation is a thing, and it does not, it's not nice for the deer. They starve in the winter. Like, people need to be more, like, learn ecology, please, everybody. Yes, Bambi is cute. So are a whole bunch of things that are not necessarily good for us having too much of. Yeah, you're lucky, Twistoma. Yeah, that was a lot like how my mom grew up because they had a huge garden on her farm, um, the farm she grew up on. And they always, and my grandma always canned everything. I used to love my grandma's ketchup. Like, she made ketchup instead of doing store bought ketchup. And hers was so much better than Heinz. Like, even that was the only the last tomato thing that I even really liked. But her ketchup was a little bit sweet, and she made it with, uh, Fresh tomatoes and canned it. It was really good. I was like, who would e ever eat other ketchup? Alright, let's see here. Gotta get these little facets in. Kind of getting all these little guys. Kind of just looking at, again, again, looking at my light source. I'm trying to figure out. There's a little facet up there. Hard to get an angle on these big models sometimes that shows you guys what I'm doing. Oh, Kiri may be about to trigger, guys. Uh, what time is it? Well, I've got 15 minutes left. That's about the usual Kiri triggering time. If her tail goes off, I'm going to abandon you guys briefly to uh, attend to my little doglet. Because she, uh, I'm certain she will have an explodey episode. We went a little long yesterday, so I could go a little shorter today if I had to, but. Maybe tomorrow we'll do Wraith King. I've been thinking about where I would put paint on him. Doing transparence, transparent miniatures is just uh, kind of an exercise in thinking about it beforehand for me. All right, so we're just getting some of those little angles. See, the more white you put on these, the more you're starting to get more of a shiny look to them. You want to outline all the facets just like you want to on like an NMM sword. Um, Saltor, if you get the pastured eggs, they're fine. I mean, they're more expensive. You're going to pay a lot for eggs. I do. But I get pastured, locally produced. David made fun of me when I uh, started doing it, but he's he's capitulated. He, he humors me now. They are tasty eggs. Uh, if you want farming, you should go to a farmer. Or a farmer's market, I suppose. Although, again, you'll pay a premium there. There's a farmer's market somewhere around here, but I haven't haven't gone. And now that I'm in my winter cooking phase, I probably will hold off until spring. Although I found out there's a fish market. And that, that tempts me. Like, that's relatively close-ish. And getting fresh fish sounds... If we're going to make sushi, I'd have to. As David asked about making our own sushi the other day. All right, so let's see here. So we're kind of putting in some more light on these guys. Notice, so what we're doing here is we're doing transmitted light. And transmitted light is light that enters one side of a translucent thing and comes out the other side. So if you've got light falling on this upper surface of this gem, it's going to come out the bottom and the lower parts of the sides here. 
So that's why I'm doing this. That's why I've got a highlighted facets up top. You've got a shadow under it, and then you've got this. You've got the light coming down. That's what makes that appearance. Hey, scrying eye. Yeah, that would be, like, that'd be the usual egg, Saltor. That's why I pay extra for the pastured. Sprouts is a little bit decent with their pastured brand. They're not, uh, they're not too expensive with it. But, yeah, I, I'm an egg eater, and so I want my eggs to taste good. All right, so we got again getting our little facets down on that these guys now. I'm doing them in yellow first. I'm just kind of uh, figuring out where they are. So I'm doing the NMM gold highlight is the one I was using to just kind of uh, map in. And notice as I as since I'm using this more muted yellow that uh, it's. It's making the gems less bright, right? And so it's making them go in with the green, blend in with the green a little bit better. So. Well, that's what the local fish market does. It sources from a specific company that is um, in Monterey, I think, um, that goes all up and down the coast here, Shadow Raven. So I would know exactly, actually, the company you're getting the fish from. And they have an excellent reputation, so... That's why I was interested, because when I looked them up, I was like, oh, really? Because pretty much they're the people who run these these fish markets. Like, they, they're a fishing company, and they're like, the best way for us to get our stuff out to everybody is to run local fish markets. And so they worked with local communities and set up essentially a farmer, either with a farmer's market or a separate fish market um, that they supply stuff to. So I'm very intrigued. I would like to go and see what they've got. Yeah, because I'm very conscious that to make good sushi, you need to know where your fish comes from. So it needs to be fresh. And it's so hard to get that with a regular grocery store. So it's like, that's why I started looking for a fish market. Because I am on the coast, right? I'm on the west coast. We're less than an hour from the ocean. So I should be able to find a good fish market around here. Especially with all the foodies in this area and all the good restaurants. Yeah, there wasn't in Texas either in Ara. Everything was flown in and probably previously frozen, a lot of it. But, I mean, we had kind of a coast down south, but you get different fish there. That said, I still love my sushi. All right, so see, we're fasting out all these gems now. And as we fasted them, this is why I say, guys, highlights and shadows change the color of an area. They change the overall, like, the way the color actually looks, right? So we went from a pale apple-y green out here. When we start actually adding shadows and highlights to it, then it comes in a bit darker, as you can see, because there's so much texture in this dragon's skin. Um, so we lose a lot of our mid-tone to that texture. We build a new mid-tone that's instead a little darker. So everything shifts when you... When you do shadows and highlights on a color, depending on how much area you take up, your color will change. So, yeah, I have a lot of sushi. I have like six or seven sushi places within walking distance of my apartment, Jabberwock. I am spoiled. Like, the only thing that keeps me from indulging is the fact that I'm a starving artist right now. And that I can't afford sushi more than once every few weeks. So, you know, a little bit of the Patreon may go to my sushi every few weeks. But in general, I'm I'm a good Anne uh, because I, I can't, just really can't afford to go out to sushi all the time. I have a very tight budget. Right, Kiri? Kiri knows. She's like, Mama would eat much more sushi. Mama would eat sushi every week if she could afford it. But I can't afford it, so... Not yet. I do love sushi, though. Yeah, it doesn't pay to eat cheap sushi when you don't master. I completely agree. Yeah, these are good sushi places around us. David isn't as... Like, he, David likes sushi, but he's not as into it as I am. 
But we are both into Indian food, and we also have, like, six excellent Indian restaurants within walking distance of us. So I'm kind of spoiled for the Indian food out here. Like, I've never lived in a place ever where there was so much amazing Indian food as there is here in the South Bay. Because Silicon Valley and so many people moving over from India, and there's just, like, there's all this amazing Indian food. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the Patreon plug, Nomad Zeke. Yes, I have a Patreon. I forgot to mention it all stream, but I just put up a vampire skin video yesterday for the $10 tier, and I did um, how to do fur texture video for the uh, for the uh, $2 tier earlier this month, so we were doing some Halloween-y stuff. So I hope you guys like that vampire video, because that's my own personal recipe for vampire skin. I, As far as I know, I was the only person to do that recipe. There may be somebody else out there doing it, but that's really my go-to. I really like the complexity of it. I wish it would show up better on camera, but it's got such subtlety to it because it uses really pale colors. Indian Persian Italian fusion. Crazy, Valandar. Yeah. Yeah, I always liked Thai. Like, I always found it easier in the past places I've lived to get good Thai food, but here Indian is king. We even have, like, five Indian grocery stores within five, five miles of us. So I'm very tempted to learn more about how to cook my own Indian food. Because I do like to cook, and uh, we like it so much. But yeah, for those who are not on my Patreon, I did Vampire. I did Vampire Girl yesterday. I, I used a, a, a Dark Sword model who was supposed to be a winter, winter queen or winter uh, maiden, and did her as a vampire because I thought that was totally a gown that a vampire would wear to a ball. So, so yeah, if you haven't gone, if you are a patron and you haven't checked out the Vampire Skin Tone video, go check it out and i hope you like it it's it's definitely like um a more advanced like as far as the colors i've been trying to go a little more advanced for you guys in the higher tiers because i know you like it when i do them the really you know funky stuff not as much uh the everyday painting but i'm not sure if this stream is good for my diet <laughs> uh, indian food is Vegetarian friendly and keto friendly, depending on what you order. So it's actually on diet. Like I make myself um, cauliflower rice to have with it instead of regular rice. So it's uh, it's actually on diet for me to have Indian food, which is ridiculous. But yeah, so I do a funky um, vampiric skin tone that actually uses highlighting with complementary colors. So I use greens and pinks. It is kind of weird. All right, so yeah, that's coming along, guys. See, But see how those highlights do wash out those gems? So we go from a very saturated orange that really doesn't go great with this delicate green to being more of a more complex orange that does go well. <laughs> You're craving sushi, Indian, and Thai. Oh, boy. Yeah, Scrying Eye, do, do. Um, if you want to, if you're you're on the Discord, if you're on my Discord for my Patreon, if you're on my Patreon, um, the, the, what is it? Francis, you did it. You put it, or Margaret put it up. It was the uh, directory. If you go to the directory channel on my Patreon, it gives you a complete list of all the topics and what month they're in. So it makes it a lot easier. And I also use a lot of tags in my Patreon, guys. So if you just type in painting skin tones, the vampire skin tone will pop up. I also did a tag for um, vampires and a tag for non-human skin on it, I think. So I tag all my videos. So you guys should be able to search by that tag or by any tag you want for that matter painting white painting black you know layering you know you could even do it by brand because often i'll do like dark sword or i'll do you know reaper or whatever um i'll do i have a bust tag for painting busts you know all that kind of thing i i believe in the using the um the tag system on patreon so you guys can find exactly what you need very quickly 
without wasting a lot of time because when you want to paint something you want to watch stuff about it right away this needs to be lighter see again I'm kind of tilting it up and making sure that I'm getting the top facet the lightest We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, Margaret's directory is awesome. Redmond, Washington. Well, we're going up to Seattle to um, hang out with David's parents uh, over Christmas. So maybe uh, maybe we'll have time. I doubt it, but maybe sometime. Oh, I love venison. Yeah, Ethiop Ethiopian food is super tasty. All righty. So look, we got a lot done. Like this front leg, guys, is getting down there like... Even though we were chatting about everything under the sun, we've, uh, we're making a lot of progress here on our front limb. I'll need to figure out next what I want to do with these claws because they look kind of faceted. Like, should I make them gems? And if so, should I make them orange gems or different gems? Like, I'm really, I'm kind of split now. I'm like, oh. So, I think I'm going to make the rock he's on. I, I can't decide whether to make it kind of a sandstone color or a darker gray. Um... A darker gray with a bit of blue would work really well if these big crystals are orange, which it makes sense they would be. Although I might do some orange and, and shade them with different colors. I might do an orange fading into purple or something for some of these big guys um, because there's so many of them. Yeah, every region has its own, like, awesome, right? There's always going to be something you miss. All right, the other thing I think I might do is line real quick before we call this, before we go looking for people to raid. Um, I think I want to grab this brown liner and line. Usually I line where two surfaces meet another. And in this case, the, the underbelly, the soft underbelly here is definitely different texture from the gems and from the, uh, the green here. So I want to take a lot of paint off of my brush so I can do really nice fine lines. And then I want to line around the belly so that the yellow and green have a strong barrier demarking them. And if I feel like I go a little overboard, because I, I am, my, my lining paint is a little darker today, um, I can always just kind of glaze my green over uh, to make it softer and take that line a little bit down. But I do want a definite barrier because these are two different two different surfaces see so putting that line in there separates them and I need to separate this orange and this green because this little gemstone didn't get outlined yet so yeah so that's how we're we're coming along here, guys. I think those gems look pretty cool. Michigan actually does have soil for wine. Because they've got that rocky, stony, sandy soil in a lot of the state. Oh, I love pierogies. That is one thing I do miss that I don't get on low carb, obviously. I uh I've I've toyed with the thought of making gluten free pasta. But you just don't get like really good low carb gluten free pasta for ravioli type things for that sort of thing. I actually love miracle noodles. I tried miracle noodles. I was dubious about them for so long. And I recently tried them. And they're like a root that uh they've been used for for non glutinous noodles for a long time in like Korea and Japan. And the texture is like really noodly. Like I'm just like shocked. I'm like I finally have a noodle substitute. Oh no! Well, give them a shoot them an email and complain, dog father. You'll get another one. They'll they'll replace it. And tell them, you know, that it had no cover. And was not packaged correctly. Blick is really good about replacement. They absolutely will replace it. Send them a picture if you want. But yeah, they've got Blick has an excellent reputation with replacements because that stuff happens. Those tubules, they'll shake off in packaging or maybe just somebody doesn't get it. 
when they ship it, but they will replace it at no cost to you. And honestly, uh, Dogfather, when they send you that replacement, keep the original brush, don't trash it. Um, get it wet, get some hair conditioner, shape it nicely, and leave it. And I'll bet you might be able to reclaim that brush. Unless it's like seriously dyed, but you probably can salvage it. And then you'll have two brushes for the price of one. Yeah, shirataki noodles. I love them too. Yeah, they are a pain to cook. But, um... They're a pain to cook, but you know what? It's They actually cook in less time than normal pasta. Since you just have to, like, rinse them really well and then just heat them until all the water is out and they're dry. It was weird to get used to, but... Now that I'm used to it, I just I just really love the texture. The fact that I feel like I can eat noodles again. It's awesome. Okay. I think we're good. Hey Justin, are you alive and is there a raid around? We actually managed I am I am alive. Let me uh, let me see if a raid is ready. Yeah, I'm really happy with this front leg, guys. I think this is uh this dragon's coming along really well and it's a really unique color scheme. So it's it's going to be a very unusual looking dragon. I like him a lot. I can't wait to do this big clump of crystals on his butt. That's going to be fun. And finish out the clump of crystals up here. I went very yellow with this. We'll see if I can still stick to that. We have a Zambies. We have a Zambies in the house. All right, cool. Well, then, I think that uh, we've managed to make it without a cure emergency, which totally baffles me, and I need to rush her out immediately. So you guys have a fantastic day. Um, I will be streaming on my own channel. We'll do D&D &D this afternoon, guys, at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, so after you've uh, watched Josh, uh, if you want to come over, we're going to be doing more world building today. I think we're going to talk about the gods a bit and how they appear in our uh, our city we're making up. All right. So I'll see you later on uh, twitch.tv slash painting bake and see you later. Thank you guys very much. Um, today is uh, Tuesday, though, Miss Ann, which means, yeah. So we have Proctor at four. Um, thank you guys very much for coming out. We appreciate you as always. Keep being awesome. And uh, tell Zambies we said hi. <laughs>